Hello, and welcome to an early edition for science today. Um, yeah, the rest of, I guess, the day, you don't have to necessarily do much associated to this lesson today. So you could use your time to work on ELA after watching this lesson, or if you're anyone who wants to do any of like the bonus work for science, then you'll see what is in this lab or what's in this lesson. Okay, so today what we're learning about um, are animal tracks and clues. So with the page that you had yesterday, I suggest that you bring that out. And there's only a couple of things that we really need to write down today. Um, so this is the learning statement. It's, I can recognize evidence of animal activity in a natural outdoor setting. Okay, so that's it. You can pause me if you need to write that down. Okay, so the title is Animal Tracks and Clues. Okay, here we go. So these are some pretty cool pictures. All right, so many animals leave behind signs that they were present. You do not need to write this down, okay? Just kind of like, just as just a little intro. Since most animals are active when, when we are sleeping or because they try to avoid humans at all costs, which definitely is the case, right? Because they kind of, they, most animals are threatened by humans. Anything higher in the food chain, they know they're threatened by. Um, we must look for clues that they were near us. Okay, so, hmm. How do you think we could tell that animals are near us? Well, the most common method is by the tracks that they leave behind, if they're an animal that doesn't fly. Of course, it's harder to track animals that do fly. Or I guess fish, right? Anything that swims. Okay, so animal tracks. This is what we're gonna be exploring today. So it's kind of similar to what we did yesterday. So typically, this is the easiest thing to look for. Our animal tracks, or what we might call footprints. Okay, so every animal has a distinct track. Um, just like we have different fingerprints, therefore it's easy for us to identify the animal. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be doing a little bit of work on today, is identifying different types of tracks. Okay, so it's easiest to find tracks after, like in certain situations, right? Like if it's super dry outside and it's going to be really difficult to tell if a cat walked on the street because obviously it's dry, but it's really easy to tell if there's like rain or new snowfall or any type of like malleable ground surface. So like we saw in the video from the other day, if they could make that like plastic print, well, I guess they called it a latent print, but it was kind of plastic in a way because it was in a 3D material. Then we're easily, more easily able to sense the animal. Here are some kind of cool prints that would be, um, that would be known for different animals. There's a whole, 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 whole ton of them. Um, and it's kind of interesting to think like how these animals, yeah, how they might look. Some of these prints, I think what they've done here is this is the front and then this would be the back paw. So we can see how some of them have really similar looking um, rear and then hind paws and then others might have different. I guess maybe the white-tailed tail deer might have similar for both. Okay, yeah. Okay, so today's optional activity, and this is one thing that, um, yeah, people who are striving for ease, you would do this. Like, I note the people who do this stuff, and then, yeah, like it pretty much, like if you're doing this stuff, it's pretty much guaranteed to bump you up like a whole entire letter grade, or ensure that you, for, if you're already an E, it's gonna for sure keep you at an E. So this is one thing that, um, yeah, that you could do. So optional activity, okay, and we're gonna do this on um, kid blog. So, <clears throat> okay, so first of all, what kind of tracks, uh, what are the tracks of your favorite animal? What do they look like? Or you could choose any obscure animal. Like you could choose something you've never even heard of before. And that's kind of like maybe what I might do too. Like, well, what's an opossum? Like, I don't know, a woodchuck. Okay, cool, yeah, what is a woodchuck anyway? Like. Um, so you could find a random animal. Then what you need to do is find an example of this. Find an example of an image of your animal, okay? So it has to show the animal like this and it has to include both, include their feet. So we can tell like a little bit more information even kind of by like general, general look at the animal. And then the second part would be finding an image of the footprint. So you'd have to go into Google for this and then I'd say like, you know, try to avoid the common ones like a cat or a dog. like. Think about maybe like something a little bit more obscure that we might not see um, 
as often. And you could go back and then choose some of these ones to use. Yeah, but I kind of stray away from house cat or just like dog, basically. Um, okay, so then what you could do is create either a matching board. So this one's a little bit kind of more involved. So maybe you'd want to say, okay, which footprint do you think matches to these animals? Then maybe you'd want to give like a couple of animals and then show, I'll show you on the next page an example. So like this, okay? So like the raccoon, which one do you think that the raccoon matches to? Which one do you think that the coyote matches to? Okay, so that's the matching one. The other one is a multiple choice question that you could create. So we're gonna kind of turn this into a bit of a game and then we're gonna switch with other people. Um, so the multiple choice question could be something like which pattern or which, like, which example of tracks um, matches the, I don't know, like matches the beaver, for example. And then you might want to include like, okay, A is this, B is this, C is this, D is this. And then, yeah, hopefully you make it like kind of a little bit tricky for the other person to solve. So there you go. Um, that is an optional activity. And if you do choose to do it, um, I, yeah, this one should be done honestly by, I'm gonna say like, oof, I'm gonna say Sunday. Um, because then we're going to be kind of getting into something a little bit else. So that is, yeah. So if you want to do that, you could. It could be kind of fun. Okay, so there's that example again. Okay, we're going to just watch this video. That is the next little thing. Hey, Brian Mertens here. And in this video, we're going to talk about animal tracks. Animal tracks come in all different shapes and sizes, and if you want to become skilled at reading the stories of the sand, then you need to have a strategy for how you can pull information from those impressions you see on the ground. What I'm going to share with you over the next few minutes is a blueprint for how to do this. We're going to get really familiar with what the components of a track actually are. This is one of the very first hurdles that you need to get over on your quest to becoming a tracker. And if you can learn to recognize these five components of tracks in the field, then you'll have a framework for gathering the important information and finding out who left the track. It's basic stuff, but oh so important. So come along with me and we're going to revolutionize your tracker's eye. So <laughs> here is our track and here is your track. Now. What's the difference between these two tracks? Obviously they are different, but what if you had to explain the difference to someone who couldn't see what you're seeing? We need to have a way of quantifying the difference in order to communicate and have confidence about what it is that we're seeing. And this is why it's so important to know the individual components of a track. This is what makes it possible for us to pass on our knowledge really easily. And the take home for you is that this is the whole secret for you learning to identify animal tracks in the field. For example, take a look at the number of toes on these two tracks. If you know the number of toes that an animal has, then you can greatly narrow down the list of potential animals when you see a track. Dogs and cats have four main toes that register in their tracks. Deer and other grazing animals have two. You have five. So one of the easiest ways to effectively quantify the difference between these two tracks is that this track has five toes and this track only has four. That's pretty simple to grasp, even if you can't see the track. So this is the first component that you always need to be looking for when you're out tracking. The next thing we want to be looking at is the nails. Looking for nails can be really helpful because some animals like the canine family have nails that usually register in the tracks, whereas other animals like cats, they usually don't register in the tracks. The relative sharpness versus dullness of the nails can also be a really good indicator of domestic animals versus wild animals. Our third track component is called the metacarpal pad. The metacarpal pad is this area right here and that's your metacarpal pad. And it's not to be confused with the heel pad, but uh-oh, where's our heel pad on our dog track? 
And this is where we see one of the other major differences between humans and dogs. Dogs don't really have heel pads that register in their tracks. They're missing our fourth track component and they actually walk on their toes. So this is a good demonstration of why knowing the track topography is so important because it gives us direct insight into the animal when we see a track impression in the sand or in the mud. Pretty cool, huh? Now the final track component that we're going to look at is the negative space. Negative space is the gap that's created between the metacarpal pad and the toes. It's actually the absence of an impression and different animals will produce different shapes with their negative space that enables you to tell them apart much more easily. The best way to observe the negative space is by imagine a line flowing between the metacarpal pad and the toes. Some negative space will be an X shape, some will be a star shape, and some negative space will be like a sideways C shape. And that's negative space. So there you have your complete track topography. Toes, nails, metacarpal pad, heel pad, and negative space. And now that you know to look for these components in tracks, you've just shaved years off your learning journey. All you gotta do now is get out there, put this into practice, and let me know how it goes. I also wanna invite you right now to subscribe to this channel. Okay. Click this button to subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, buddy. That was great. Okay, excellent. Um, great. So, okay. Um, alrighty. So actually that kind of gives me a little bit of a hint for this multiple choice question. If you wanted to make up a multiple choice question, you could say some defining characteristics. So maybe you wanted to say, okay, um, you could make up some examples. Okay. So maybe we're focusing on, maybe what you could do is give them like a question that involves one of those different components. So which of the following tracks has um, a lot of negative space, like almost equal proportions of negative space to tracks that's left behind? The animal has how many toes? I'm gonna say like four toes. It clearly has nails. And let's see. It has, um, let's see, a very small metacarpal pad. Okay, so that could be kind of like a little guess who game. So the one that I was focusing on here was the red fox in my description, right? Four toes, um, pretty much a lot of negative space, like almost equal proportions of negative space to track that's left behind. Nails, you can be more specific, nails on like the fourth pad and then a small metacarpal pad. Okay, so anyway, that could be like really, really, really excellent type of question um, that you could possibly create for the multiple choice like game question. Um, yeah, there you go. Okay, good. So that is that. Um, okay, so the only other thing that we're gonna talk about a little bit today are, is this, okay? I would like you to brainstorm a list of other types of evidence that an animal might leave behind at a scene. Okay, so we talked about footprints, but what else, like what other evidence could the animal leave behind that's an evidence of a type of activity? So I would like you to post this under, like on our Edmodo page under this lesson. Okay, so this is what everyone has to do. This is like a little kind of like attendance check type thing. So just make a prediction. Even if you just write one thing, okay, you should all be able to think of one thing. Um, and then, yeah, for anyone who wants to do this, the other part, which is this. So creating either a matching board by, which is similar to this one, or making up a multiple choice question based upon some of the characteristics in the video, then, you could. Okay, so um, yeah, that's it for science for today. And we'll see you guys if you wanna have an optional Zoom at noon to go over your project um, as a group, you can. Not many people came to the optional Zoom at 10.15 for math. 
So I'll be on at noon if anybody wants to come on also and ask some math questions. Okay? All right. So see you soon.